You are now listening to Smoke After Dark. <laughs> Welcome to Smoke After Dark. Tonight, we uncover the mystery of the Piazza Bird, or better known as Thunderbird of the Midwest in mythology. The Piazza Bird is said to be located in the upper Midwest. There is a tale that has been told for over a century. Some know it as Piazza Bird or Thunderbird of the Midwest. Native Americans and early pioneers have different recollections of the giant creature that has changed hands over and over to this very day. Tonight we uncover the mystery of the Piazza bird, its legend, its discovery, and if the creature still lives today. All here on Smoke After Dark. In 1673, Father Jacques Marquette saw the painting on a limestone bluff overlooking the Mississippi River while exploring the area with Louis Joliet. He recorded the following description. End quote. While skirting some rocks, which by their height and length inspired awe, we saw upon one of them two painted monsters, which at first made us afraid and upon which the boldest savages dare not long rest their eyes. They are as large as a calf. They have horns on their heads, like those of deer, a horrible look, red eyes, a beard like a tiger's, a face somewhat like a man's, a body covered with scales, and so long a tail that it winds all around the body, passing above the head and going back between the legs, ending in a fish's tail, green, red, and black are the three colors composing the picture. Moreover, these two monsters are so well painted that we cannot believe that any savage is their author. For good painters in France would find it difficult to reach that place conveniently to paint them. Here is approximately the shape of these monsters as we have faithfully copied it, in quote, from Father Jackie's Marquette. The French cartographer, Juan Baptiste Louis Franquelin, compiled a map titled the Mississippi in about the year 1682 from Louis Jolette's description of his 1673 journey with Father Marquette. A creature similar to the underwater panther is sketched on the map east of the Missouri River and south of the Illinois River. As in Marquette's description, the animal is wingless with no resemblance to a bird. Wikipedia goes on to tell us, later French explorers such as St. Cosm reported that by 1699, the series of images were badly worn due to the habits of the local Indians to discharge their weapons in quotations at the images as they passed in their boats. Author A.D. Jones in his book Illinois in the West, dated in 1838, also describes the ravages of weapons, firearms, upon the images and further refers to the paintings as being named Piasu. 
The original image was the largest Native American painting ever found in North America. What else is to this Piasa creature? On one hand, we're told this is a water panther, an underwater panther. But people like John Russell, in his account, paint a different picture. The monster depicted in the mural was first referred to as the Piasa bird in an article published in 1836 by John Russell of Bluffdale, Illinois. John Russell, a professor of Greek and Latin at Sheriff College, Upper Alton, Illinois. The article was entitled The Tradition of the Piazza, and Russell claimed the origin of the word to be from a nearby stream. The stream is the Piazza. Its name is Indian and signifies in the Illini, the bird that devours men. So was this mural, was this image so badly damaged on the limestone that not only the conditions, but the constant shooting of arrows made it look as if there was no wings and this image was of a Midwestern Thunderbird. Stories of Thunderbirds and monumental creatures are filled in Native American folklore. But very few are greater than the Piasa bird. John Russell goes deep, doubling down on his original message that there is a Piasa bird. He said this bird not only lives in the cliffs, but Chief Watoga, a chief of the Illini tribe, who he had met with, was in a fight for his life. The story begins, and his legend has it, when Chief Watoga of the Illini tribe had his village attacked by a thunderbird, or in this case, the mysterious Piasa bird. Almost Jeepers Creepers style how the thunderbird roared and picked off villagers one by one over the river. Fear filled the villagers' veins. Panic they did. However, Chief Watoga was brave in the face of the majestic Thunderbird. He raised 20 of his bravest warriors while the rest trembled with fear behind their doors. As the Thunderbird taunted them through the night, it is said by John Russell that Chief Watoga prayed to the Great Spirit, fasted for an entire full moon, before the solution to the Piasa bird struck him like a jolt of lightning in his dreams. Chief Watoga would offer himself as bait, while 20 of his bravest warriors used poison arrows to down the wretched creature. It was dawn. Sun was rising fast this time of year. 
As it flew high, the Piasa bird flew down to grab Chief Watoga. As he snatched the bird's wings, the twenty warriors rose, shot their poison arrows. After a struggle, the poison is said to have done its work. And Piasa bird was no more. For the Piasa bird, the mystery remains at large. But as for the original story, the underwater panther that was described by Father Jackie's Marquette and Louis Joliet also aligned with Essa Ray Costa and Wood's ideas that not only has Piasa been misinterpreted, but it's been misapplied. You see, Costa's research in 2005 led to a Miami, Illinois Indian's tale of the malevolent twin dwarves the Payasaki, the underwater panther, and the supernatural cultural hero known as the Illinois trickster, Wissakechakawa, who encounter a French trader. This legend of the Payasaki and the cliff art of the underwater panther, as misinterpreted by Russell and others, is now believed by SRA to be the origin story origin of Russell's story of the Piazza. And that's what uh, Wikipedia tells us. But it also leads us with a cliff note here. The underwater panther origin is supported by research by Dr. Mark J. Wagner, Director for Center for Archaeological Investigations and Professor, Department of Anthropology, Southern Illinois University at Carbondale. And what we're told by Dr. Wagner and what he believes is that the Piazza painting is dated into the AD 1000 to 1500 period and represented a mythical spirit being that incorporated elements of at least two worlds, probably three. He goes on to say the 1678 painting shows it as having a long serpent-like or fish tail that links it is to the underworld, which is a place of confusion and danger. The spotted panther-like body and antlered head link it to this world on which humans live. Various accounts of it from the early 1800s also say that it had wings, but that they were not always visible. Wings would link it to the upper world where winged mythical beings live. Uh, like the story I brought you here, uh, the account from John Russell that uh, we uh, that's, we revised and uh, provided clarity on some things. Now, in Dr. Wagner's research on mythicmississippi.illinois.edu one thing I wanted to highlight was the Piazza was not evil but was dangerous because it possessed so much spiritual power. Marquette recorded in his journal that his Illini Indian canoe paddlers knew this painting was coming up and were frightened of it. They may have left offerings to it to get through the rapids without danger, as did the later Illini paddlers of another French missionary, Father de Saint Cosme, who we talked about earlier. By leaving offerings to it, not only could you protect yourself, but you could also obtain some of its power for yourself, which if you were a warrior, you could carry into battle with you. So I'd like to personally thank Dr. Wagner and his research on the underwater panther creature, but uh, I'll link uh, his, his research as well here for you in the show description. Um, 
it's very fascinating to see the 19 or I mean the 1678 French drawing of the creature and the 1682 French map that was drawn um, and how even though the makers of the Piazza did not leave written testimony the fields of archaeology, ethnohistory, ethnography, and art history enable a plausible interpretation of what the image represented to its makers and how old it was when seen by Marquette and Joliet. Um, so this is really good information. Um, we also know that uh, the original Piazza illustration no longer exists in a newer version based partly on 19th century sketches and lithographs has been placed on a bluff in Alton, Illinois, several hundred yards upstream for it from its origin. Um, there are some loud critics to the account I brought you, the story I brought you, um, and what a John Russell believes about the creature. Uh, one uh, loud critic is Shepard Price from The Telegraph over at thetelegraph.com. In a piece written over the summer, July 1st, 2021, he says, While the Piazza now has wings and is said to have the ability to fly, the underwater panther, as an aquatic cryptid, has neither. In fact, nothing about the Piazza is correctly attributed. The word Piazza, which comes from the Miami, Illinois language, actually refers to a completely different cryptid within a story Russell may have heard from the indigenous peoples of the first being in mythology, the trickster killing an underwater panther before being assaulted by two supernatural dwarves. Those twin dwarves are what were referred to as the Piazza by the Miami and Illinois tribes. He has a very long piece here, so I will link it for you in the show description. But the last part of this I want to highlight for you is uh, really a part where he, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's a little bit of an outline of the whole thing here where he's really condemning John Russell's account in uh, his myth here. He says, Russell wrongly created the Piazza myth out of the Illinois tale of the underwater panther. There was no chief Otuga. Watoga in the story, the protagonist of Russell's myth and the slayer of the Piazza bird, rather the Illinois version of the trickster, was named Wissakachichikawa. The trickster was a figure in American indigen indigenous mythology, which provided an instruction on how to live properly by living improperly, suffering the consequences for each mistake when Wasichika and a timid Frenchman who was going to trade furs with Wasichika, stumbled into the cave. The trickster acts confident and unafraid as the underwater panther ignores him. He then frees the panther's captives after the panther falls asleep and kills the underwater panther with gunpowder and a rag. Eventually, as Wasichika keeps the cave for himself, he is attacked by the Piasa or Piasakai. So, is this creature some sort of Loch Ness or Ogopogo-like monster that has been misinterpreted by John Russell's 1848 account? We have growing voice, growing evidence that seems to prove just that. So if this is some sort of Loch Ness or Ogopogo-like creature, could it survive today? Could it be lurking the waters today? In the area where it was lurking was where both of the rivers intersected. And that was something that was also um, very interesting. With the currents so rapid, um, this monster being underwater, uh, you would almost think 
would come up after some time. <clears throat> Especially during those times. You know. And if it, you know, if, if we are talking about an underwater panther. Uh, this is something that. Uh, underwater. Things live. Uh, a lot longer it seems like than on land and I think that's another uh, important fact so at the section of the Mississippi and Illinois River you know it's increasingly dangerous which would also make sense for a monster to live because it would be less people traveling through because of how rapid the tides would be then if someone did go missing it would be blamed on the tides more than some underwater panther, some serpent. But what about the bird aspect? What about this thunderbird? That there's more than one account. There's hundreds of accounts. But a lot of things between the stories about how the creature looked similar eerily similar with the tail um, so we continue to look into this what about recent sightings well then I'm an alien talks about that on April 24th 1948 a big bird that looked like a naval torpedo was seen flying at a height of 500 feet over Alton, Illinois by E.M. Coleman and his son. They said the creature, just like the legendary bird depicted in a petroglyph on a bluff by the Mississippi River in Illinois. Sightings continued over St. Louis, Missouri during the following week. There were some possible explanations for that. An anomaly alien, they say, uh, Perry Armstrong, a surviving, uh, Perry Armstrong basically says a surviving uh, flying reptile, a Ramphalachnus, was a long-tailed petrosaur that lived in Europe and Africa during the late Jurassic 150 million years ago. Sounds a lot different than the underwater panther. But as recently as 1948, we have a sighting from two people. Then, other sightings occur. Now, was this creature scared off? Did it notice these people? Once industrialization started moving towards the area, did the creature relocate to a more recluse location? This story lives among the Chahokee tribe, the American Indian tribe indigenous to the Midwest. And stories like it among other Native American tribes exist all over. One thing is for certain, whether John Russell was lying, which some say he has a admitted and fessed up that it was a lie one thing's for certain it's hard to deny that there's not something lurking in the skies ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening to smoke after dark and just like the hands of time I'm turning it over to you good night everybody <laughs>